Hey everyone, PJ here. Remember Prismate Luke? For those of you that don't know, Prismate Luke was a commentary channel that was really popular a while ago, but later got exposed for lying and then everyone stopped taking him seriously. The reason I'm bringing him up now is because I just found his successor. He goes by Timmy Two Cents, and he made a dog shit video about Sue Klebold, mother of Dylan Klebold. Yes, that Dylan Klebold. Completely slandering her and saying a shit ton of falsehoods about her in hopes to paint her in the worst light possible. He does this by using edited footage from her TED talk and taking quotes out of context. And to give you an idea of just how scummy this loser is, he is actively deleting comments that call him out on his bullshit and blocked Miorbi's name from his comment section, Miorbi being someone who called him out. And he knows full well what he's doing is wrong, and he's trying to cover that up by silencing people who call him out. I'll leave Miorbi's video in the description. That being said, I am going to be parodying that video a little bit, but I'm going to try to do as little as possible. And no, I'm not going to be linking Timmy Two Cents video because I don't want to give that clown any more publicity than I need to. This video, as well as Miorbi's video, are the only publicity this bald, pointy head, soy jack, Mr. Clean looking piece of shit deserves. What was I talking about? Oh yeah. So, anyway, let's tear this Sister Love and Hillbilly's video a new one, shall we? I watched Sue Klebold's talk, skim through her book, and- Wait, you skimmed through her book? You didn't even read it? Well, no wonder this video is dog shit. If you didn't know, Sue Klebold is the mother of Dylan, who in 1999 tried to kill everyone at Columbine High School in Colorado. Sue claims that not only could she not have known, but no one could have identified her son as a deranged killer. And she even had the audacity to educate us about mental health, or brain health as she calls it. Uh, sir, your straw man is showing. You see here, the thing is that Sue never said any of those things. Sue doesn't say anywhere in her TED talk that she couldn't have known that Dylan would turn out to be a school shooter, nor that nobody could have known that Dylan would turn out to be a school shooter. But we're going to come back to that claim in a little bit. But first of all, there are two things that I want to point out. And number one is that if Sue had said that she couldn't have known that Dylan would turn out to be a school shooter, she would have been right. There was no way for Sue to know that Dylan would have turned out to be a school shooter. And yet Timmy just brushes over that as if that suggestion is silly, even though it's the truth. The second thing is that nowhere in Timmy's video does he actually back up the claim that Sue claims that nobody could have known that he would turn out to be a school shooter. When you learn all the facts about the case, who Dylan was, the mountain of evidence showing Dylan and Eric's plan, it's hard to imagine why Ted would ever allow her- I mean, when you put it like that, yeah, it does make Sue look like a negligent mother. But here's the thing. Sue didn't have access to this mountain of evidence until after the shooting took place. Sue is the parent of one of the most deranged children that has ever walked Earth. And without an admission of error, she has nothing to teach us. The facts surrounding Columbine are disturbing. Fair warning, this is going to be quite the emotional journey. Before the shootings, I thought of myself as a good mom. Helping my children become caring, healthy Responsible adults was the most important role in my life. I wanted to first. <sighs> if only she used this as an opportunity to take accountability for what her son did. Oh, wait, she did, but you cut that part out. Here's the full clip. Before the shootings, I thought of myself as a good mom, helping my children become caring, healthy, responsible adults was the most important role in my life. But the tragedy convinced me that I failed as a parent. And it's partially this sense of failure that brings me here today. You claim that Sue had no admission of error, yet in the clip I just showed you, she does exactly that by saying she failed as a mom. And you left this part out why exactly? Oh yeah, it's because drama gets clicks even if what you're saying isn't true. New York Times article reviewed Sue's book. The top comment reads, Watching her rationalize her son's murderous actions is nauseating. She blames ignorance and Eric Harris, but never herself, a vile person. So instead of reading off the actual article that you listed, you instead chose to cherry pick a few negative comments. What does it say about you? Instead of citing the book or citing the New York Times review of the book, we're citing the comment section on the review of the book. You read out a comment saying that she doesn't take responsibility, and yet if you were to read out the article to your viewers, you would read this. The crime of which Klebold convicts herself is ignorance, and for that she feels bottomless guilt. She recalls being dumbfounded when someone asked her if she could ever forgive her son. 
Forgive Dylan, I said. My work is to forgive myself. I was the one who let him down, not the other way around. He's only showing certain parts of the scene at hand. Those parts being the ones that make him look like he's in the right. He's afraid to show the full scene at hand because if he does, people will see right through his bullshit. The worst part of the interview is when Tom Klebold, Dylan's dad, says people need to understand this could have happened to them. Which is another way of saying school shooters are completely random. You just love taking shit out of context, don't you? Here's the full interview. When they talk about the event, they discuss it as a suicide. They acknowledge but do not emphasize the murders that their son committed. They also talk about the signs they missed. He was hopeless. We didn't realize until after the end, Tom said. Susan added, I think he suffered horribly before he died. For not seeing that, I will never forgive myself. They believe that what they call the toxic culture of the school, worship of jocks and tolerance of bullying, is the primary force that set Dylan off. They confess that in the main, they have no explanation. I'm a quantitative person, said Tom, a former geologist. We're not qualified to sort this out. They long for some authoritative study that will provide an answer. People need to understand, Tom said. This could have happened to anyone. They didn't say, school shootings are completely at random. And if they are, so what? That's only further proof that his parents couldn't have seen this coming. This isn't like the world is today where shootings have become all too common. This was back in 1999. Mass shootings, specifically school shootings, were practically unheard of at the time. Like, that's not to say they didn't happen, but they were certainly not as common then as they are nowadays. And again, Sue didn't have access to the mountain of evidence that her son was a deranged psychopath until six months after the massacre. So yeah, for her it pretty much was completely at random. You were actively taking victims' words out of context to make them look bad. And you're supposed to be the good guy in this scenario? If this is the good guy, I don't want to know what the bad guy's like. Finally, Sue consistently gaslights the audience and cherry picks what she wants the audience to think about her to shape a narrative. There are numerous examples. One that sticks out in my mind is when she tells a story about how Dylan forgot Mother's Day one year. That spring, we had the worst argument we ever had during his lifetime. It happened on Mother's Day, the last Mother's Day we had together, and it still hurts me to remember it. I can't remember exactly what set me off. I was heartstruck about a disastrous year I'd had with both my kids, angry about Dylan's continuing negativity and bad attitude, and quietly hurt he had forgotten Mother's Day. When I confronted him about his attitude, I had this feeling he was responding not to me, but to some inner joke. It seemed disrespectful. Fed up, I got in his face. I shoved him against the fridge, pinning him there with my hand. Then I waved my finger and gave him a real mom lecture. I didn't yell, but there was authority in my voice as I told him he had to stop being so crabby and selfish. The world doesn't revolve around you. Dylan, it's time for you to think about other people in this family. You need to start carrying your weight. Then I reminded him he had forgotten Mother's Day. Finally, in a soft voice that carried warning and power, he said, Stop pushing me, Mom. I'm getting angry, and I don't know how well I can control it. Even though she's trying to spin a narrative, she can't help but reveal who she is in these stories. It's very strange she doesn't pick up on the violence in this situation. You almost miss it if you don't pay attention carefully. Sue is seemingly unaware of how violent Dylan was. He threatened that he might not be able to control himself if she doesn't back off. And she admits to pushing him up against the fridge in the beginning of the confrontation. And yet, he doesn't show the full picture, because why the hell would he? Here's the part that Timmy leaves out. Later, we sat together at the kitchen table. We both felt awful. I apologized for losing my temper, and Dylan apologized for forgetting Mother's Day and volunteered to help me prepare dinner. That afternoon, he went out to buy me a card and an African violet planted in a tiny watering can. It was a perfect gift. I love miniatures, and we had collected some together when he was little. We hugged. I thought it was okay, although I noted he's only signed his name to the card instead of Love Dylan. Of course, I wish we hadn't fought, particularly on Mother's Day. But I felt justified. Aren't you supposed to confront your kids when you feel like they're straying off the straight and narrow path? I feel different about that fight now. I know that hugging my son and telling him I loved him wouldn't have stopped him from hurting himself and others. Still, I wish I had taken his hand. Sit down with me. Talk to me. Tell me what's going on. Instead of telling him everything he was doing wrong or what he had to be grateful for, I wish I'd listened and validated his pain. If I had to do it over again, I'd tell him, you changed and it's scaring me. But I wasn't scared. I should have been, but I was not. Sue was saying that her son's temper was getting out of control and she was trying to get him back on track. 
She faults herself for not seeing her son's pain and expresses a great deal of remorse for what she said as well as what she didn't say. And you made it seem like they got into a fight because Dylan forgot about Mother's Day. Do you feel any shame? Any at all? And obviously I'm not trying to defend the atrocities that Dylan and Eric committed, nor am I trying to justify it. There's no doubt in my mind that both of these kids are burning in hell for what they did. All I'm saying is that doesn't justify slandering the family of one of the culprits. But apparently Timmy Two Cents feels differently. Of what her son did, she found a way to get attention and admiration when most would never dare. Sue's hairdresser was interviewed shortly after the shooting. But Dee Grant, Susan Klebold's hairdresser, saw her just days after the shooting. She had no idea her son. She had no idea. I asked her if she had any idea. And uh, she did say no. I did not want to pry. I just find this odd. Even if Dylan had just committed suicide, harming no one but himself, I can't imagine getting my hair done in such a short proximity to the tragedy. Okay, with the way you're putting it, it does sound bad. But before you judge her for getting her hair done the day after the Columbine massacre took place, put yourself in her shoes. Towards the conclusion of his video, Timmy says that Sue must be a narcissist because days after the shooting, she went to go get a haircut from her hairdresser. And now people deal with grief in many different ways. Some people lock themselves inside of their house and some people can't bear to be inside of their house because imagine being Sue the next morning, walking down the stairs, going into the kitchen where your son used to stand at the kitchen counter and he's not there. And you're immediately reminded not only that your son is now dead, but that he's just killed so many people walking down those long echoing hallways and past the empty bedroom can you imagine what that's like and so wanting to get out of the house doesn't seem crazy to me and for you to say that that's narcissistic is disgusting there's so much more to this loser's video but unfortunately i had to leave some of it out because i want to keep this video short i mean the original video is over 40 minutes long and i don't have the time for that like I said at the beginning, I'm going to be linking Miorty's video in the description since he goes over this way better than I can. But in conclusion, Timmy Two Cents is trash, his takes are dog shit, his videos are about as reliable as the aforementioned Prismate Luke, and if you're subscribed to this scumbag, then do yourself a favor and unsubscribe. And give that subscription to somebody who actually deserves it. And Timmy, if you're watching this... After everything you've done, blatantly lied about Sue Klebold, built a straw man of her, took quotes from victims out of context to make them seem like horrible people, heavily doctored footage, cherry-picked one or two negative comments about her, grass at straws, said she never tried to take accountability for her ignorance even though she did multiple times but you didn't show it, delete comments that call you out and you're lying, and whether it was your intention or not, created a hate mob towards Sue Klebold. And you have the audacity to act like you're in the right, even when you know full well that you aren't. Timmy, if you're watching this, I have one message for you, courtesy of Mudahar. You are literal human scum. You are a waste of cum, okay? You are the cum sandwich that deserves to be lit on fucking fire. Not even consumed, not let anywhere near a human body for a possible chance of reproduction. That's what you are. Like, seriously, how does this guy sleep at night? And the question I'm asking is the same question I was asking about Prismate Luke. Why? Why would you go out of your way to say things about someone that you know full well aren't true? Well, I think I have an answer to that. Gossip and drama equals clicks. People like Prismate Luke and Timmy Two Cents don't care if their slanderous videos could end up hurting someone. They don't care that they're spreading misinformation. They don't care about all the damage they could cause. All they care about is views. They crave attention. And they're willing to do whatever it takes to get the attention, views, and ad revenue that they so desperately crave. Even if they have to hurt someone in the process. So with that, like always, I strongly encourage you to do your own research instead of taking my word at face value. And as always... My name is PJ, and I'm gonna go get ice cream. You ain't never gonna slow me down, cause I feel alive now.